you're a fish just swimming along minding your fish business when out of nowhere out of the clear blue ocean you feel something latch on to you then it climbs through your gills enters your mouth and attaches itself to your tongue we could stop right there because that's horrible enough but it gets so much worse the creature in question is called simothoa exigua aka the tongue eating louse and as the name suggests it eats tongues tongue eating lice are parasitic crustaceans found in the oceans of the world to put it in perspective they're crustaceans like lobsters and crabs and they're isopods like roly polies or this creature called bethinimus gigantis which you're just gonna have to google because i can't go any further crustaceans are one thing they already look like aliens to me but isopods just scream face hugger, don't they? On top of all of that, now you have a parasitic isopod. What does that mean? Our good friend Simothoa exigua is an ectoparasitic isopod. Ectoparasitic meaning that it doesn't live inside of its host like other parasites. It lives on it, like on its gills, or in this case, in its mouth. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but there are many, many species of ectoparasitic isopods. Specifically, there are many, many species of ectoparasitic isopods that specialize in attacking the mouths of fish. They're literally called mouth-dwelling isopods. And they're big. Like, you can see them dwelling in the mouth of the fish. Simithoids are protoandritic hermaphrodites, meaning they can transform from male to female as needed, but we'll get to that later. They're born in the oceans of the world, swimming and floating around the water column, just waiting for a fish to latch onto. And they have to do this pretty quickly after they're born or they will die. And I know we joke and kid about bugs being aliens and parasites and how disgusting they are, but the reality is that all of these creatures are just trying to survive. And I love that for them from a distance. The lucky tongue-eating louse enters the gills of an unsuspecting fish and immediately starts sucking on its blood. Fish are usually infested with multiple tongue-eating lice, and the first one to arrive is the lucky one that gets to transform from male to female. Then it enters the fish's mouth and attaches itself to its tongue. Once a female is present, any other lice that show up and attach themselves to that fish stay male. So when the female crawls into the fish's mouth through its gills, it latches onto the fish's tongue with its front claws. And when I say latches on, the tongue-eating louse has five jaws, and they are perfect for two things, slicing and sucking. So once it latches on, it immediately severs the blood vessels to the fish's tongue and starts to suck the blood from it bit by bit until it shrivels up and falls off. First of all, you had me at five jaws. Once the tongue falls off, it attaches itself to the remaining nub using its hind legs and assumes its new role as, wait for it, the fish's tongue. The tongue-eating louse takes on the role of a fully functioning tongue for the fish once the actual tongue falls off. Moving on, remember those male lice that stayed male because they didn't get to the fish first? They crawl into the cavity between the gills and the tongue and proceed to mate with the female. Now's a good time to explain that the transformation from male to female causes a lot of intense changes in the louse's body. Its eyes shrink, its legs get longer, its body gets much, much larger, and it loses its ability to swim. So it looks a lot different from the male louse and if you see a mating pair you'll see this giant female that's playing the role of the fish's tongue and a very tiny male tucked in the corner like i said there are a lot of different species of mouth dwelling isopods but simothoa exigua is the only one that's been known to actually fully replace a part of the fish's body and it does this to the red snapper 
look, outside of the whole tongue shriveling up and falling off thing, it's not really clear if the presence of Simithoa exigua has a long-term effect on a fish's well-being. After all, it does go on to become a fully functioning tongue, so the fish can go on eating and swimming and living its best life. There is some evidence that shows that infested fish are more likely to be underweight and have tissue damage, among other things. Once it's installed as the new tongue, the louse goes on to mate, eat, and molts like a regular crustacean right there in the fish's mouth. And when it's ready, it releases its brood of up to 400 babies into the ocean to start the cycle again. Some experts believe that the louse will actually wait until the fish is schooling to release its baby so that they have a better shot at finding a host. It's unclear what happens to Simithoa exigua in later stages of life. Some believe that they go on to live with the fish for many years and then eventually become detached. Other evidence suggests that once the tongue is completely gone, it lives off stored energy until it has a chance to release its brood and then it lets go and is probably swallowed. There are actually many examples of fish that outlive tongue-eating lice, but in a lot of cases the fish die because they no longer have a functioning tongue. Regardless of what actually happens, I'm good. These things pop up absolutely everywhere. Most notably, a woman opened a can of tuna and saw one staring back at her, briefly causing what was known as hashtag tunagate. The good news is that they don't latch on to human tongues, although they have been known to bite when fishermen attempt to remove them from their catch. I am not a fishing expert, but if you see a pair of eyes in a fish's mouth, maybe throw that one back. That's all for now, and remember, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, but always check your fish before you eat it. Give me them cold days. Give me them warm nights. I'ma have to see you outside. Yeah. I'ma have to see you outside. Yeah. Give me that sunshine. Give me that bird's eye. I'ma have to see you outside. Yeah. I'ma have to see you outside. Give me them cold days. Give me them warm nights. I'ma have to see you outside. Yeah. I'ma have to see you outside. Yeah. Give me that sunshine. Give me that bird's eye. I'ma have to see you outside. Yeah. I'ma have to see you outside. Let's go. I'ma have to see you outside.